Welcome back to KKOW. <laughs> Seattle's all night smooth jazz. Hi, welcome to our annual Jacob Love is here Blind. Jacob, Steven Tyler interview. Just act like you're super burned out. <laughs> act. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't a person unless you're acting. <laughs> I think we should just go from here so I can keep that in. It's going. We're going. All right. All right, boys, girls, and professional butthole surfers. Welcome to another episode of Radio Loud. That's our new intro. Oh. Can we do that? Uh, as long as it's not the actual audio. But um, hey, all you uh, all you boys and girls out there, we set up the Facebook page in the last couple weeks. So why don't you go? Uh, go on, give us go, a good old lick. Give us a like so you can make Radio Loud Radio proud. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. What? I thought that was Jake for a second. <laughs> what? It's something I would do. Just don't acknowledge it. We're cutting it out later. <laughs> that, that music isn't going to be in there. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, yeah. Got rid of Stefan. <laughs> we finally upgraded the music yeah. to full South African trip hop. Stefan is fucking absent this week. Fuck He's you. getting a tardy. Fuck getting you, a tardy. We're going to recommend him to the principal's uh, office. They're going to remove his left uh, his left foot's big toe. So uh, this week, uh, Jake Pine is filling us uh, in for us. Yay, Jake Pine. Yay. Now get the oh. fuck out of here. <laughs> fucking greasy bastard. <laughs> it's true, actually. You are looking like you just got finished with some wet aerobics. <laughs> oh, I got out of the shower. Love it. Covered in grime. Mm. Dirty, dirty boy. It's a prime time for grime. Mm. Every Friday night, dude. That's th- Dude, that should be the name of our podcast. Let's change it. Prime time for grime. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually a bunch of... Uh, kids i would hang out with uh when i was in my early 20s and they had this uh-huh. little th- group called the grime mob the grime mob and one of them's uh oh, one of God. them's name was uh you, yeah you remember what i'm talking about yeah. right jake yeah it was like kind of like the, the greasy haired scene kids <laughs> yeah a bunch of crusty little punks but uh one of uh-huh. them had a really good name it was uh optimus grime <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> that's money actually i like yeah. that yeah, there was some clever. Uh, this was like grime. back in the day of a uh, Djibouti dubs when uh, that shit was fucking fresh. Uh, yeah, I remember we had a little crew of kids called the Short Man Clan, and our they, they were they were like a year or two younger than us, but it was all these like you know these little like wannabe like tough guy kids, third graders. Yeah, but the, I mean they were like you know. 14, 15, but it was a bunch of like the short kids from school and they were all like friends and they're all like trying to sell weed and like wear chains and shit, <laughs> but they were really not intimidating when they're only like five, two <laughs> and they're like already a year well, or two younger you know, than any, you. Any of those kids in high school that walked around thinking that, you know, they had you yeah, right? suburbia, you're wearing chains and shit. Exactly. Like you with your fucking a and and fucking Hollister shirts. Yeah. Like you're not exactly out here bang, yeah, bang, please bang. Please go in the hood and pull some of that stuff. Oh, please. yeah. Well, I, th- I think I heard one time they they tried to rob somebody. Like, well, they, I guess they did rob somebody. But basically like five of them like jumped, quote unquote, some guy. <laughs> and basically he just like went to the police station and was like, hey, fuck. I don't even remember any of these guys. Names, they leapfrogged him. Yeah, it was basically just like, hey, <laughs> this guy like snatched my shit and ran away. And they just like, the cops just went over, like knew exactly who they fucking were. Went just, to like, the kid's parents' house. Exactly. They went to the parents' <laughs> house and were like, hey, your son stole something today. Give it back. The kid came out of the basement crying. <laughs> well, you know, you know. I didn't do it. What? Everybody They're lying. They're me. lying. Tyler told me that Tyler told me that everything was cool and that he was friends with them and that we were just messing around. <laughs> 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 That's like exactly how it is too. It's always those shitbag people who are like, "Why does this stuff happen to me?" Tyler's like, "We're gonna play a-, a prank on my oh friend my Steve." God. You know, you know who I'm thinking of right here. We had a guy who would just like fuck everything up and he would literally pull it. It was like, why is everybody going to talk to me like I'm always the one in the wrong here? It's like, because you fucking are. always the one in the wrong. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, you fucking are, dude. Yeah, maybe if you stop making dumb fucking decisions, you won't be upset all the time. I'm, t- I'm actually trying to think of who that is. 
That's like asking a duck not to fuck. True, dude. Hey, th- there's a reason their dicks go. Woo, I think there's woo, a woo, duck woo. fucking in this song right now. There is, man. This is some funky. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we had talked previously about the ridiculousness of uh, the suburban thug and took it even one step further into the rural thug. Oh yeah, oh, farm homeboys. God. Yeah, they're farm boys. We definitely and the suburban thugs turned in. Remember those? And they turned into the farm thugs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, th- like th- you, we might be thinking of the exact same people. Here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. When you paint a giant like shitty pot leaf on your walls, because your mom said it was cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wait, how many leaves do they got again? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a maple leaf, well, buddy. You know, you'd have to count, be able to count first. <laughs> well, see, God only gave them five fingers, so they weren't leaves supposed to count. Leaves of three, let them be. <laughs> leaves of four, eat some more. Pretty pretty leaves of so five, seven. getting. Hives. Some of those people did so <laughs> many roles that were probably comprised of mainly bleach that there's nothing left. Yeah, that's sad to think about, though. Into the void. Yeah, it is kind of you. You even in the moment you knew some people would just take took one too many too many days in a row, and then they were it's never just, the fucking same. Yeah. And now that's just dial tone, man. <laughs> yeah. Please hold the line. <laughs> Someone will be right Please with you. Please hold the line. Your call is very important to That's us. That's been my favorite. Um, <laughs> Please hold the line. My favorite descriptive term for like boring dates. It's like, oh, how was how was your day? I was like, oh, she's a fucking dial tone. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> Straight up, man. Do we even get those? Do you still get that if you stay in a line for too long? No, I think it just auto hangs up. Yeah, I haven't heard that in fucking forever. If you'd like to make a call, please, please hang, hang up, up and, and try, try again. again. If you need help, then please call your operator. Albuquerque. <laughs> and we can't do a single bar more or we'll have to pay Weird Al. Dude, Weird all, Al. All our ruples. Weird Al don't take people to court. Could you imagine Weird Al reporting to you? fucking court? Just like, they wouldn't even Today's take him w- seriously. Are they, are they, like are Harvey they... Weidenstein's day in court was today. Imagine Weird Al reports to for fucking court. I feel like he'd deliver in his, his suit entire... and tie with that, yeah. with that he's hair. He's turning, it's presented as he's turning himself in. No, I feel like what he'd do is he'd do his opening arguments as parody songs. He would show up and have like prepared songs for the, for the case. And he'd be like, where the defendant's standing for some reason in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it was like... This is all backwards. I was like, what would Weird Al be charged for? And it was like, duh, copyright infringement. <laughs> Why does he have a plate Coolio of- finally fucking decided to enact his revenge. On Gangsta's well, Paradise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's with the plate of pork chop sandwiches and the glass of maple syrup? I don't get it. Mmm. Mmm. He fucking takes a sip of the... Are we in a music video? Takes yes, a sip of the be. maple syrup and spits it out, and he's like, "That's, uh, it's a thick liquor." Bad boy here, <laughs> oh, you forgot to plug in your lappy toppy. I did. I did. A little bit of operator error there. I mean, we caught it before anything went down, but yeah, these things happen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Chicken and check you- yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of freestyling here on the on uh, a little bit later in the hour. I'm just kidding. We couldn't pay you to listen to that, viewers. So we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're not gonna do that to you, America, because we love you. Oh, this is Jesus. not this is not a hundred percent self indulgence. Only like sixty five percent self indulgence. Uh, yesterday, I was uh, texting this girl. She's like, "How was work?" I'm like, "Oh, you know, it was chaos. You know, putting out fires and stuff." She's like, "Like." Are you a firefighter? Actually, you're actually like, putting out fires, or I'm like, no, it was just you know, solve, like problem solving right? or whatever. And then today, one of the fork trucks lit on fire. <laughs> 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 literally, I text, I text her. I'm like, yeah, I just literally put out a fire today. <laughs> was it like a fucking battery fire or something? Oh, one a bunch of, of paper batteries? got jammed up in the you know in between the engine and the um the exhaust paper manifold, dust? just like. Like Shreds actual of paper. paper. Like yeah. Somebody was just being very, very, you know, very like probably bad. Probably like a chewed up magazine or yeah. recycling like paper or whatever. Just junk or whatever. Probably got crammed up in there. 
Hmm. Dude, I need You're to supposed start... to blow the trucks out, so that's not supposed to happen. But... <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gonna say I've, I've worked I've worked a lot of fork trucks. Yeah. I've never Dude, had you're them making start on it fire. sound like it's a fucking NES cartridge and not a six thousand pound killing machine. <laughs> Dude, you're that's to blow them out. Dude, that's part of the reason I had to leave that last job. I almost got hit by fork trucks like one too many times to oh, where yeah. like I give it five years, I'm gonna lose a foot. Hey, I, Dude, you goodbye. Know, our trucks, uh, I mean, they're propane. Mm-hmm. But they go fast, man. Oh, yeah. They some go like boys, 30. Yeah, some of those But there's li- there's like limiters on them, you know? Yeah, until the limiters break or somebody pulls them off. Gets put no, back on. Well, we've never had that issue. They service them so regular, but... Oh, um, we didn't have that situation. <laughs> but they only go like 13 now. I top out of like 13. 12, okay. 13, you know? That's still pretty fucking fast. That's a sprinting but when you're human inside, being. when yeah. you're inside of a building and you're going through little doorways as big as this room, you know? Yep. That's pretty quick, man. You're moving. It's it just and considering how much weight you're pushing, it is just a couple skids. uh, It is insane how fucking quick like people go around on those things when it's literally like companies that have a death due to a forklift accident do not survive. No, no, they 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 basically especially because it's always the company at fault. Ours has, but (laughs) (laughs) really, somebody somebody fell in the vats. We've, well, that's because that's because you work for a fucking got monster. In the bailer, some got a bunch of people got killed at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it all comes down I to mean, liability. Though. Sorry, I mean, yeah, that sucks. But it, yeah. uh, oh. oops, I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we try to save to the second half of the podcast, and so we start laughing at morbid as fuck shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's tragic, but yeah, they some fucked up shits happened. Yeah. I mean, that kind of happens when you're fucking, like, as big as a company like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, some, I guess, in a different state. I don't know if it was, like, Kentucky or, I don't know. Some guy got caught in a baler. That bale's, like... Jesus fucking Christ. You know, chewed up, like, in the recycling department when they, like, bale up, like, chewed up cardboard or paper that we'd send to China or whatever. <laughs> So I actually have a news story uh, uh, related to an uh, unconventional death. It's a Florida man. Oh, so close. And uh, this one's a a little... Mm. This one's like a week old. Uh, This is... Mustard overdose. This is one of the first deaths to be confirmed from a vape pen exploding. Oh, I've oh, heard those damn. happen to a couple of them. I didn't. There's a was it a belt. pen or was it like a module? Like uh, I'm the, not sure. It says vape like the old pen. Flip cell phone looking. Yeah, I would think like one of those uh, yeah, modules with yeah. like an actual battery in it. Yeah, yeah where they up like a hand grenade to basically tinker with them and tweak them for those sick rips, bro. Sick rips, bro. Yeah. You want to see these sick clouds? I'm gonna blow some sick clouds. Dude. I watched some friends okay. get into that dude scene too. Hopefully this thing wa- doesn't fucking blow up like a hand grenade next to my head, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's the detail: he Trapped died. Him, bro. He died in a fire. As a result of the pen explosion, and that's oh, okay. what they determined. Oh, well, uh, that doesn't but, count. Oh man the the autopsy report says the electronic cigarette created a projectile wound in his head. Oh, so it's penetrating sh- the skull and brain. What the fuck? So it basically Whoa. shot off like a rocket while he's hitting it and shot. Yeah, basically, from head. what I'm gathering, but he died of a fire. Shit. What the fuck? No, like, well, just because like, he didn't bleed to death from his head wound first, <laughs> <laughs> right? It shot in his fucking brain. <laughs> Good God! Whew. Holy he shit! One what a dome. way to go! Fish. Not only did, well, okay, you survived getting shot in the fucking brain with a vape pen, and then you burned to death. That oh sucks, dude. That could have been a great story because apparently he survived the whole fucking getting shot in the fucking head, dude. Oh my, that's whoa, whoa. Apparently, he this dies was on fire. What the fuck is that? This was due to a uh, unregulated mechanical mod. Yeah, e-cigarette. yeah, he was modding it. Yeah. <laughs> right. What and, if I put uh, a bottle rocket in here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like I need to get some of those. Dude, fumes I'm gonna put... It's like some sort of crocodile style thing for <laughs> e cig people for, uh, that well, we don't we know just about. Pack a little bit of black powder. I'm gonna in put here. like a porcelain, like I'm gonna put like a por- porcelain crucible, right? I'm gonna have like a rocket engine blow. 
into the vape juice, just a, a straight up rocket Incinerator. engine. Incinerator. It's a little mini SpaceX rocket, <laughs> scaled down. Just oh, gonna have straight it up blast that vape juice, dude. I'm gonna fat clouds, vapes. Dude, you had some uh, fucking uncles at uh, the camping thing that they went to that had some black powder and just like a little, yeah, they a did. little fucking a mortal fucking cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, we're just, like, camping out in the fucking woods with a bunch of crazy fucks yeah, all related to pine. Yeah, rolls up their 18-pounder cannon and is just like, let's fire us off into you the know, woods. It was like a smaller... Yeah. Like a 12-pounder. Nah, uh, well, the guy just, made it himself. Huh? Yeah. Like, he just, like, welded it out of, like, iron. <laughs> yeah, but he had black powder he was putting in the fucking thing. And, like, yeah. Yeah, me, yeah, me and Jake and uh, David and uh, Mike, you're a... Uh, you're, uh, it was a cousin, cousin brother, yeah, a cousin friend. brother, like family yeah. friend. Yeah, we're basically all shooting rock, like bottle rockets at each other by Just throwing the that river at each other and shit. Yeah, and uh, all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> well, the funny part Just is, like, what the fuck? We was were that? doing the bottle rockets, and he had walked down there, and yeah. then we saw him setting it up. <laughs> and Davido did not see him setting it up. <laughs> and David kind of stumbled right next to the cannon, <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Boom! Davido jumped like three feet into the air. I saw a urine. I think his bladder exploded. I think like his matter came apart. Yeah, everything his, his fell matter, apart like, and then fell apart. Back and like together. the urine yeah. shot through the particles out, just like a water balloon. And then like he came back together. It just yeah, picture that because dude, he, his pores. it. Oh my god! It was the I. I almost peed my pants. It was hilarious. He did not see that one coming. Yikes! I mean, so was he was but he like putting anything loud, in man. it, or just like no, or just it was black just like powder, just, like blanks? Okay, basically. picture like yeah. an iron tube with like a stand on it, <coughs> and then he puts a bunch of black powder in it. I mean, if you if you misjudged how much powder is in there, the it'd be a would pipe explode. bomb. Yeah, <laughs> kill us all. <laughs> yeah, th- what he was actually setting it off around like the majority of the adults over by their little like campfire circle, and it's like if that thing blows up. You're going to kill people with There's shrapnel. Multiple casualties. It was real thick iron, though. You know, oh, and he so was putting a little bit of a film, like a film canister, put some of that in there. I got you. We're it's enough for a boom, you know? Yeah. I, I hear you. Where it's not like he was actually going to kill people, but, you know, that's how people get killed, though. Yeah. And plus, the whole end is open, so it's like. Oh, yeah. Like all the won't. pressure's going to go out for rather sure. than being a compressed. But still. Close. It's fucking blowing shit up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jake texted me uh, this week asking to go see Deadpool, but another thing we got to go see solo. Yeah. I want to fucking bring this around to our. But continu- not solo. Our continuing thing of. Uh, see solo with a friend. Donald yeah. Glover kind of having a moment right now in American culture. Yeah, let me that dong, lover. So, this happened this week where um, Donald Glover fans staged a takeover of R. The Donald. Basically, <laughs> and started fucking trolling everybody on that page with that's good just some like donald glover meads so they just started you know like in a classic tradition of like a subreddit takeover oh yeah well that's that's for real what the internet's for wow the internet's for that yeah it's- but the 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 people on that page don't get that yeah well that's why they need to get <laughs> off the internet the internet was nicer when those people weren't on it <laughs> Oh, they didn't get it at all. <laughs> They're so mad. <laughs> what was the name of that uh, that uh, basically a Reddit platform that um, vote dig was it? Yeah, vote. Yeah, that well, all the the crazy white lingers that got kicked out of Reddit. Went yeah, all to the people off like the fat vote. people hate subreddits. They went to either dig or vote because <sighs> dig was before Reddit. But some people were like, "Well, we'll just go back to that shit from 1995, back when the internet was fun." I miss my Flash games and my JavaScript. That is fucking crazy. But apparently they were making posts on the page about the actor, singer, and screenwriter and proclaiming their Donald the one true Donald. The Donald to destroy all Donalds. (laughs) He's coming for you, Dad. (laughs) My dad's name's Donald, too. Oh, he's going to destroy him, yeah. I don't know any Donalds in real life. Try not to associate with people. Who have names that I don't like. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. And I've decided he's ruined Donald for everybody. I've thought about if I ever have a kid naming him Donald, not in honor of my father, but so I can boss my father around for like 
a good section of my life. Oh, nice. Just to be able to like, Donald, I am going to beat your ass <laughs> red with that belt. You get over here, boy. It's just like, but dad, I didn't do anything. So, yeah, but I remember that time my dad was mean to me when I was a kid. So like uh, people. Man, you know, you usually got to pay for that kind of therapy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. People on the um, the the Donald page were just saying this sub is for Trump, not Glover. Like, we like they d- like the they point. don't get it. Yeah, yeah like right. they, they thought people were gener- generally like confused that it was actually a. Hey, you guys, you guys got the wrong page here. It's like you might be new to the internet, guys. Let's <laughs> see, this is not what this is. <laughs> typical, typical Donald Glover fans. <laughs> Uh, I just—I know y'all might be uh, y'all might be new to the internet. Hey, here's but a, here's this a picture. Uh, <laughs> this side here is for Trump only. Yeah. Uh, this In case is, you didn't know, uh, this page is not for who you think what? it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Buy our food buckets. Buy buckets of our nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that the food buckets thing? No. What's that? It's like some preacher guy selling like. Would you like to know more? I would. Selling like these, selling these like five gallon like survival food buckets oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Someone like saw- edited like a clip of it. It's so fucking Vic funny. Vic Burger. <laughs> Vic Burger is the one. He's so, done that. Yeah. This is the second take I've seen on them. I started like, oh, watching God. it and I got distracted and I had to go do something, but. The first one with Pasta! They, were, they had that Pasta! kid. They had that kid sitting on that uh, pr- that preacher's lap, and he's just like, "It's like, why do you do this? Why do you do this?" He 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 sat on my lap, and he would say, "Wonst," <laughs> Wonst. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> the scary as all hell lady will just look right in the camera and grab, clinch her fist, and go, "Pasta." Okay, can somebody film me? And I've seen the Basta thing a bunch. What the fuck does that mean? I fucking don't know. I like literally Googled it, and the internet was like, we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm like, I'm pretty good at finding information. You know what you should do for those situations? Go to R out of the loop. Oh, and just type yeah, it. Yeah, you can yeah. post that there. Because uh, I've seen somebody it on Twitter. You like uh, the guy, Stormy Daniels' lawyer, tweets it all the time. Hashtag Basta. It's got to mean something. I feel like it's got to be an anagram or something, but like it's not all caps. I, I think don't... it's probably another language for for fucker. No, for <laughs> probably like you know gotcha. something religious or Suck my dick. Shit. Speaking of which, I need to make a case here. I know you're a guest judge. You're gonna you you get to have Stefan's opinion. <laughs> okay. In two weeks, okay. Miss Daniels will be in Wisconsin. Miss Stormy Daniels oh, yeah. will be at the Silk Exotic in Madison. I mm. thought she was going to be at the one right up the street. That would have been prime as fuck. She's the lady who's suing Trump for having sex with her. That's at least the that's the oh, short version. Oh, we should go and support her. How do we? And like literally, her headline is one of the funniest things I've ever read. It's like this this stripper is worth up is worth at least one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Like they <laughs> are plugging the whole Trump shit. Isn't she like? older too like their affair is yeah i mean she's back. probably 44 she's got a little stacy's mom going on she's like she's like a uh she's a milf she's a, a grapefruit that's just a little bit too ripe but, but still it's delicious. still good yeah but you'd sleep the fuck out of that grapefruit you know you, you, <laughs> and you <laughs> tell your friends you'd be like that grapefruit a couple days old mm. i got it mm. <laughs> you're saying this mm. like it would be a fucking prime opportunity for her to fuck you no, oh, no, nothing, no. Uh, so nothing, I'm, I'm uh, in a committed relationship, dog. That's not even going to happen. But I'm saying. <laughs> nothing this, a teaspoon of sugar. He's, he's looking at me. He's like, Doug, you're trying to get us both fucked up. <laughs> right? She's on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah, be careful. What's that, baby? I would fuck Daniel. All right, she's in. I'll kill you. Three's a party. Uh, but I think that. Even if we did maybe like a hotel room pre-show, and then it, I mean, I would love to go live from the red carpet. We have available to us like three Scarlets. Oh, if we could get them. that hooked up to like Ms. one Daniels. computer, we'd have enough for some mics. Miss Daniels, will do you do an interview with our us? first live Ms. correspondence? Miss Daniels, Daniels, we are here with, wouldn't that be a first guest? That would be fucking How tits. do you top that? Literally. 
damn oh money right on the money uh but yeah that would absolutely like what if we got her to sit i mean i feel like we have to pay like a couple hundred dollars for like a private dance we'd have fifth and then four bust minutes? out the microphone yeah four gotcha. minutes gotcha <laughs> this is this Basta. is right no, no. <laughs> what we got to do Basta. is just like a, a like a daily show correspondence where it's just like fake on yeah. the scene yeah. like uh we'll just like get a couple shots outside and just like do the whole thing like it's some sort of like presidential election oh event. my god oh, then we'll have hell. a fake interview with her because we won't have her on camera. She had she, she agreed to come on mic, but off camera. Right. We, well, get, we get one of our female friends to impersonate her. No, here's what we'll do. We'll fucking get a picture of her and then Conan style animate just her mouth and oh. it'll be you and you'll just still have your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's, she's a lot hairier in person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now we have to cut all this so the audience doesn't see it coming. But uh, Actually, I think this is uh, prime. We're about a half hour in. Prime time to take a break. We will be right back. After a quick word from fucking we'll, nobody. We'll, we'll. Nice. So that's your podcast, huh? You've been listening to Radio Loud. You can find us on Podbean at radioloud.podbean.com. Or you can look us up, Radio Loud, on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Or you can tweet us at Loud Podcast. Only use caps, please. All caps That's when you spell, spell the man's damn name. name. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the football player, the juice from the 85 Bears. It's rolling now. <laughs> What's your favorite type of juice? I like like the Cran Apple. It's oh, yeah. Good. I hear you. I hear you. You like the pulp? I like pulp. I like to beat the pulp. Mm -hmm. I like to I like to floss it out. Like I like to filter feed like a whale. You know when I drink. Oh, like uh, what's that? Baleen? Yeah. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's (laughs) baleen. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Krill. Oh, did Doug just choke a bitch? <laughs> no. Doug's cooking choked a bitch. I took one deep breath and got that spicy burnt Oh, why couldn't you just give that to me and you laugh? Because you didn't fucking earn it. You didn't fucking earn it, Doug. Hey, uh, okay. So. Give me a second. Oh. You need to grab me a soda. Chicka check, chicka chicka check, chicka check, chicka check, chicka chick. If you are a fan of Sonic Hedgehog in the 1990s, you may be addicted to uh, Adderall right now, or maybe you're just waiting for our new segment suggestion box. All mm. right, I have one that I thought, um, Sean, you're gonna love this one. Okay, this goes back to the um, the Dungeon Disco. Mm. Remember where uh, they were stepping on booby traps in the disco? Like it's a, just a grid disco floor. And yeah, and all of them are booby traps. Yep. That's dope. And uh, Guy Fieri is the <laughs> the personality of the joint who's running it. <laughs> yeah, and then the, the evil this, bad uh, guy's Guy Fieri. This disco is essentially set up outside of a uh, um, the literal monster trucks event. Where I... it's like mythological monsters with truck bodies on their backs. I do not remember this segment as well as I thought I did. Those were back to back. Those are back to back. So this one is the same bar, the same dungeon disco. It's just a new attraction this week. This week it is Warlock a Flock of Flame. Warlock a Flock of Flame. Uh, and what, he sacrifices somebody in the crowd? Because <laughs> we all know that that's not God's music that wa- the Warlock a Flock of Flame is making. Uh, he is obviously a, uh, he's a flame warlock. And, oh uh, yeah, he uh, has to. Um, 
He has to, like, build up his, like, weed points or something <laughs> like that. He has to take a smoke break in order to actually fill up Year, his bar. Years later, years later, his musical careers has gone down the fucking toilet, and now he just he's just, like, a washed-up pyrotechnics guy. He just... just he's a fucking roadie for some shitty hair band. <laughs> he's, like a, he's, like a, he's like a roadie for... for um, a Metallica cover band. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he'll <laughs> I be. I was gonna say like you know like whatever's left of Journey or something, and <laughs> the one guy on a fucking dialysis machine, and all he does is point and make <laughs> flame. He does so, pyrotechnics with his with his hands, just points. He's washed up, sitting behind the lights, like yeah. showing up board. drunk every day, just he's, like he's in a trailer. He's just, just an old gold drunkard. Soccer. He gets inv- invited to the party, and he has to actually go into combat, and he's just like. Ugh! And it just it's just like fireworks. Oh, there's a big Oh, I see. I, I saw it more putting out, this whole thing turning into an E D joke. Oh. Oh, I was trying to bring it bring it back around. Oh no, I was just trying to make fun of impotence. <laughs> what, like his penis is actually just a snake? Yeah. Can't tell snakes from dildos. Just burns out. <laughs> it fizzles out. Oh, we got a dud. <laughs> uh you gotta reach on? <laughs> yeah, I do. Have you guys noticed how in every like post-apocalyptic world or adventure and shit, there's always that one fucking asshole who like picks up some like football gear like it's armor, like yeah. he's walking around in the shoulder pads like everywhere you go. Like they can be in like Eastern Europe, and there's that one guy in football shoulder pads. I swear to fucking god, there was that trope in uh, Gears of War three. One oh, of them, really? one of the characters, they go to like the ruins to like get some supplies. Like, what and the fuck are you gonna do with that? It was a stadium <laughs> of a sport that they used to play, and it was like, oh, you used to be on this team, and he's just like a big muscle meat man, yeah, like yeah. all the rest of them. Oh god, just a bunch of slabs with fucking like uh, yeah, aliens guns <laughs> and with chainsaws on them for bayonets, like and Mickey like, Rourke's you character play in Sin City. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, dude, you are just a walking yeah. What was his muscle. name? Meat Slab bleed face. <laughs> meat face. We just call him good old sandpaper yeah, pores. Meat face bleed slab. <laughs> God. That's like a good uh, uh, one yeah. of the many names of David Ryder. It was an old MST. Like shards of glass in his face would make him look better. Yeah, that's actually how he does his, how they did his makeup. They just cut off ugly warts and stuff off his face. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess basically all my question was what other. Reti- I, I guess I don't even have him. No. <laughs> oh, you almost let me slip there. I, could, I commend you, reto- sir. I did I mean, my head. Other, uh, that was a what concerted other, effort. What other re- rhetorical? Uh, <laughs> what other rhetorical questions can you ask tonight? That's what I'm <laughs> what um, other stupid pieces of gear from our like modern sports or just th- that's anything? That's where I was going. Yeah. What would, would you find in a post-apocalyptic? Sense. Well, if we're doing the Canadian Extended Universe, we know that they'd be out there in, with hockey sticks. Right, right. That's how you'd kill the zombies, is oh, with hockey the- sticks. You would literally have Wolverine, even though Wolverine's already Canadian. You'd have the uh, a mutation of him. The it's broom like, from It's the- like three generations removed. <laughs> and From curling. And yeah. they just go, shing, and hockey skate, rusty hockey blades pop out, out of his their arms. Oh, that would so be rad, just, actually. That would, yeah, that's slash people. That's pretty like terrifying. What would, the, what would the name be? It would be the... Uh, um, Something the human of. loser. <laughs> because he'd go down and he'd come out of his shins, too. And he could go down loser. Nice game on. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go with a uh, uh, th- throat slip ballot. Because it's like hockey skates and ballet and like... Slit in throats. Wait, so throat slit ballet or throat slit ballot? Uh, oh, like no, hockey like, skates like, come out of um, the arm? Uh, yeah. And throat rhyming with vote, so I it's like voter like, ballot. Uh, if you had metal hockey sticks, like the paddle of the hockey stick, but it had been sharpened to a fine like uh, razor. It's like two big like hockey hockey paddles come get out. Get right, right in there sharpened. with the mic. You know, sharpened down to like razor thin. It, it almost looked like silly Wolverine claws, though, because I feel like as they did the turn, they just like droopy claws. <laughs> you know, like to be droopy Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, and he'd be a good. Uh, he'd be a good Canadian. Oh, like, it wouldn't come out of his. 
it would just come out of like the bottom <laughs> here and like kind of curve off. Oh, we just have one. He could just instantly yeah, summon yeah, well, a hockey stick out of his forearms. Shink. You guys want to play a pickup game? Eh? Sure. <laughs> poo, poo, poo. Oh no no no! Uh, instead of the um, because he's Canadian, like uh, essentially the ca- Canadian superheroes all have their like they're all essentially defanged in some way. Oh yeah, because they're Canadian. Yeah. Um. So instead of the hockey blades popping out of these guys' forearms, it would be rollerblade urethane wheels. <laughs> oh, God. Just little skatey wheels. <laughs> Not even rollerblade. Like, actual... Roller skates, roller like, skate yeah. two wheels. by two yeah, skate the two wheels. by twos with like the soft the break rubber in the front. For, yeah, for like <laughs> for like indoor skating, like not meant for concrete. It'll it'll rip up the wheels. <laughs> Do his, not take these outside. His name would be <laughs> Canadian Blade, and he would be black <laughs> as the night. <laughs> uh, no, wouldn't he be Canadian Skate? Because you wouldn't call him Blade, you'd call him Skate. Yeah, Canadian Let's Blade. Did you guys bring your? Did you guys bring your skates? Canadian Cheap Skate. All right, one more cheap for the. Skate. I, I like need to start one. a spreadsheet with uh, all the CCU. Yeah, yeah we're, not we're only not only do, do like roller blades like or roller skates pop out of his arms, but he just like he ones. never pays for meals. <laughs> he just rolls away. <laughs> Well, I feel like we're turning him into a super villain, which is good because we don't have any villains. Yeah, the Canadian. No, we do. We do. We have a uh, Devin Townsend as Mr. X. We have Mr. Who, X is a good well, guy. Professor no, X no. is a good guy. No, Mr. X is a bad guy because he steals everybody's songs ideas. Remember? Well, Devin no. Townsend, the handsome man. His from, sidekick. Uh, well, I don't remember ago. him being handsome. Isn't well, there? guess what? He's no, got that a was sidekick, and it's the Canadian cheapskate. <laughs> yeah, <be> cheapskate. <laughs> Cheapskate's the name, that's dude. The, that, that's the name. We've been telling that. We've been saying that for five minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he wasn't listening. I'm gonna buzz oh. myself. I was listening, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's totally been the fucking thing we're going through. That's why he dines and dashes because he's cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Let's put him on the villains list uh, along with he'll be he'll be Townsend's the, Mr. Uh, X le- underling. His his his, his uh. But he's really polite. He's really, like polite. He's really like, polite about it though. Well, they're all polite. It's Canada. Yeah. There 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 is no nobody raises their voice the entire movie. Like he apologizes <laughs> about dining and dashing, but he will do. I'm it. really sorry about this, but money's kind of tight right now. So let's. Oh, it's uh, fine, sir. Uh, you, you'll get us next time. <laughs> uh, totally. But he never does. Oh sure. Uh, who is the French one? I want to recap. We have Captain Canada. Yep. We have the French one who the croissant. Four people, I forget his name. We'll come back to him. The French one, that's the middle finger. So we'll come back to that one. Uh, we have the wall. Can the French yeah, one the be a villain too? Favorite. We have Jean Beaubuffet, the Mounty Bounty Hunter. We have <laughs> Mr. X, Devin Townsend, who uses Cerebro <laughs> to steal people's Oh yeah, intellectual personal, property. Yeah, they're they're and like their identities and shit, right? And then we have cheapskate. Uh, the cheapskate. I'm gonna make another <laughs> French. I'm gonna make a French villain though. Go nuts! Oh yeah, because he was he was French Canadian. Yeah. What was the French guy's name? What was the French guy's name? Num- th- this guy number I two. I do not remember. We're gonna have to go back. And well, I'm making to a French episode. villain right now. What's, He's what's a flaky croissant. Oh, he just never shows up? Yeah, he never shows up. <laughs> he never shows up to back up his friends. Never shows up to any of their functions? <laughs> never. <laughs> like all the bad the guys have like they're having Number a, seven, we got two today. This is great. They're having like a, a, a red wine and cheese tasting. And red wine and cheese? That's a bold choice. Are you going to drink white wine and cheese? I mean, yeah. It's not like you're having a steak, killer. I mean, you could... It doesn't have to be white wine. Kind of does it? I think so. I think that's the rules of wine and cheese. I don't even know. I mean, I'm not classy enough to get invited to these kind of things, but I think that's the rule. Me either. And he is, and he doesn't even show up. Oh, what a dick. It's just because he's <laughs> French. They just want him there to, like, up you know, up the prestige. Yeah, they the want party. the accent. Yeah, yeah. A French guy drinking wine? Every, yeah. We made it. Yep, we made it. We're there. <laughs> this is the party. I wasn't this sure that was part party you creeping in here or what. <laughs> no, that's she's supposed to creep in afterwards now. Yeah, Emily, you're supposed to follow the cat in here. <laughs> you just me out there. <laughs> oh my god! All right, I got another one here. It's um, it's called discount liquor. Okay. Um, rummaging through a shopping cart 
Uh, literally like a five dollar DVD bin at Walmart. It's just mini bottles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! It's God. just like all the bad sells or whatever, whatever they couldn't sell. All that holiday themed flavored they're vodka not even like that the, nobody wants to touch. They're not even like the you know normally those little bottles are like the good. They're like a little mini Jack or a little yeah, mini yeah. Jim Bean or a little mini. It's like old Thompson and Kessler's and and like birthday cake flavored Svedka. Oh my god! Yeah, or I, like a, a a fucking I think gift set with Jägermeister in it with like the stainless steel cake. stag mm. fucking <laughs> shot glasses in it. Do you ever want your liquor to taste more like unrefined iron? Because <laughs> we can do that. Oh, my God. Do you wish that you grew up in a mining town and your entire fucking taste palette just consisted of different tastes of metal? <laughs> Do you like coal and carbon? <laughs> the have complex you, tastes of a char have you ever of a wood barrel. <laughs> have you ever drank rubbing alcohol from the Dollar Tree? If no, if not, you're missing out. Have you ever been cleaning a rotary dye anvil and wanted to squirt some acetate in your mouth? Yep. Forbidden <laughs> snacks. <laughs> They're like, don't drink that. You're just thinking, just like, oh, that must get you real fucked up. No, it just makes you go blind and die. Don't drink that. What are you trying to keep me from? What secrets are you hiding? Have you ever spent a month on your piss-soaked couch wearing your wife beater with mustard stains Hello? and your shit-stained underwear? Yeah. While... <laughs> While polishing off a bottle pause, of pause, pause for me for a second. What was that? Hand sanitizer. Oh, he snuck out. Unbelievable! <laughs> that was a great joke we just told off air. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Ha 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 <laughs> so uh, uh, we had to take a break because uh, we had to a we had to a out air out the area because we burned some food. We and had to then, a out the air hole, air out the asshole. And then my cat Bane got out in the hallway, and my neighbor like was so kind enough to let me know. So sorry, we're burning from garden era. Didn't. We're throwing cats away. <laughs> Fucking next, take him to Goodwill. We'll get a new cat. This one with blackjack and hookers. All right. Um, Starbucks racial bias training. Like, this is a real thing. Starbucks yeah. is going to close 8,000 store. yeah, U.S. stores yeah. for racial bias training. My comedy thought for that was being the black person at, at the like, racial like, sensitivity. Of those stores. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's literally going to be like, if you are white, do not make eye contact with black customers. If you are, it's going to be like, I feel like there's, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be like that, but like, I do. I exaggerating forget. on it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh yeah, obviously. It's not like they could literally say that because then they'll have to have a day for their CEOs to sit down and explain to them what I'm they can I'm just covering say. so somebody doesn't take that little somebody thing Somebody doesn't that you think said. I'm a fucking <laughs> ignorant prick. <laughs> Joke's on you. I am. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, I've already lost the the plot of this novel so basically being like one of the black people at one of these oh, racial yeah. incidents that activities. would just that would Trainings. feel almost that would suck one of them's gonna here's what you need to do there would always be the person but like, you need to make a stick okay about that we it. and then make them have it's like this is this is insensitive making me be here <laughs> you need to just keep see how far you can push them because, like, I've, I've watched people do this. Just, like, making white people uncomfortable is really easy and really <laughs> funny. Let's see how much, how far we can make Starbucks bend. Or you could do it the other way where it's, like, uh, the store manager is, like, talking to the, the black employee before. <laughs> and, and they're, like, uh, you probably don't have to come to that. Unless you and want then to they just, And then they just be, like, <clears throat> that's racially insensitive. <laughs> Unless you want to come, I don't know what you want me to say here. I don't know what the right thing is. I didn't go to the class yet. Right, dude. There's, <laughs> there's, that's the worst part is there's some poor fucker making like $10 an hour who's just like has to either manage or deal with fallout from like this. Right. And it's like. This somebody just doesn't deserve to honestly, have. Honestly, Starbucks is a fairly progressive company. And 
that they've uh, they've basically stated now their new policy is like you could just come in. You don't have to buy anything. You can be in the store. They've said that blanket yeah, it, statement now. You could just go into a Starbucks thing. Yeah. and just not buy anything. You can be in there as long as you're not causing danger or, or yeah whatever. Like that. Either damage or danger to other customers. But I feel like this thing is such a such a gross overreaction to something. Like the the shit that happened was like definitely this is kind of fucked up. But there's like so many people that are going to just be like, I can't believe. Like I understand this. Most people understand this, and we we all have to like sit through this now. Yep. Or maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe everybody out there in America and all the Starbucks is just a bunch of fucking foaming at the mouth racists. It's not even just, that. You yeah. know what it honestly comes down to? There are certain people who don't understand that you don't call the fucking police. Right, right, Unless right. you're, like, lifeline through either, like, major property or, like, your own personal health and safety is, is at risk, do not call the police. Because they escalate every fucking situation they encounter. Right. And when you call the police on two black guys, the cops don't know what happened. They don't know that you just need these annoying dudes to, like, maybe leave because they're being... Pre you know, like, I'm not speaking about these specific guys or anything. It's why there's such a steep uh, penalty for getting swatted. Yeah. Because the SWAT team shows up and they're like a tactical team. That, they're not, yeah, they're not here to play fucking games. Yeah. They're not here to like We're talk here to down. check the corners and it Shoot probably anything yeah, that moves yeah most well i mean not anything but assess then shoot except and for all the innocent possibly people anything that moves teams. might got you yeah, yeah, yeah except for all the innocent people dogs and property that gets destroyed by swat teams and then is never paid for by the government but that you know fucking biggest gang in the world and the world wears blue and we're not talking about the fucking crips now are we but that's a completely different point might want to buzz that before sean goes off on another socialist <laughs> rant it's about that time once a week better go talk about the bourgeois down we're gonna burn them fucking <laughs> lynch them all lynch the masters lynch the managers oh shit i know you can't use the word i got something for this do you good, good. not as a read but i do have something from uh <laughs> well hit me with it from the body of content from our good old friend alex jones mm, jonesy i recently stumbled upon a youtube video wait hold, wait 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 this is a uh, a meta content YouTube video where somebody who had been making content for a while probably ran out of ideas and was like, okay. Let's I'm go down the rabbit hole. I'm going to try. No, not the rabbit hole, but like but I'm going to try the Alex Jones diet <laughs> because that's where for the un, the people who are uninformed about Alex Jones, he he basically makes his money through... First, scaring people about the fluoride in the water and stuff that they're sneaking into your foods and then selling these, like, uh, canisters of snake oil to alleviate these things. He has this uh, huge supplement line that he's selling. Supplements. And he plugs them. The biggest hustle in the world. So, uh, and he also has, like, a bunch of, uh, like, dietary advice and stuff like that that he follows. Because that's who I'd trust to get fit. Alex right. Fat Fuck Jones. <laughs> Oh, it's not about getting fit. It's about getting, it's about getting her, uh, your mind off the water that makes the frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's his whole logic for it. It's that the fluoride's making us homosexual somehow. But, so this guy just bit at it. That and might he, be a little bit of projecting. I'm thinking maybe Alex Jones is having gay thoughts <laughs> and he needs to blame the water. <laughs> It's probably going to be this big scandal. Yeah, dude, he's he's going to get caught tapping footsies in a public bathroom somewhere. It's going to be Alex Jones admitted in Morse code that he's gay. So this guy basically did the Alex Jones diet for like 30 days. It's okay. supposed to like okay. boost your testosterone in, in order to alleviate all the ridiculous effects of like the water and the food on your like testosterone levels because that's what's making you gay yep <laughs> <laughs> yep lot it checks out man I've, I've seen the science so i just thought like the premise of it was fucking funny enough yeah just to mention uh, he didn't have like a like a he conclusion or anything he wasn't like that. gay after 30 days actually change of fortune <laughs> alex jones makes you gay <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh they should just uh put his show on the side of a bottle like an off bottle <laughs> and just 
name it woman repellent. <laughs> oh, oh my god, you might as well. Jesus Christ. Uh you got uh you got any more reads? Um I have the ramblings of a madman. Uh All right, I got one for a uh, filler while you uh call one up. Actually, uh where's where's the, the pine cone? Um probably taking a poopsies. So uncivilized. <laughs> um, that was uh, as cute as I could have said it. <laughs> this one is called uh, Pet Graduation. Oh, is that him coughing? See, Jake? No, I think it was Emily. No. Oh. Okay, this is called Pet Graduation. Mm hmm. Uh, your. This is pretty much from the perspective of your pet being your roommate. <laughs> okay. Or, like, your son or daughter. So. Your pet and ends up graduating with honors, and they surpass you, and they move out, get their own place. <laughs> 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 so you say so your pet's like <laughs> your pet's like you're, you're doing adopted. so shit that your pet is like out in the fucking world, like doing better than you. He's he's out there. He's pounding the ground. He he becomes like a a, a chemist, and he ends up like. Curing cancer or something like You're, that. My golden retriever fit, cured fucking sickle cell anemia. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Right. That he has the power to do that if I just stop picking up his shit and make him get off his ass and get a job. <laughs> like the only reason that dogs are this lazy is because nope. we feed them and pick up their poop. No, maybe it's because of uh, neglect. You, you neglected your dog. You didn't pick up his shit. You didn't give him a good home. So you wanted to get the fuck out. It inspired I didn't, him to get up. I didn't read to him as a kid. And now he's not very smart. <laughs> you know, my, start reading to your dumb fucking puck. Yeah, you start reading him bedtime stories. You know, Spike reads at an eighth grade level. I'll have you know. Hey, Show with some of the to, people I've met out there, I wouldn't be fucking so when he get When he gets advanced enough, show him how to balance the checkbook. And oh, yeah. It's just like, actually, most of the housework is done Eventually by Eventually, he'll scrubbing. be trading stocks for you. Yeah. And so that one day, it all crashes. He takes a bath, and it's like, all right, I'll yell we're going out back. You know what you nah, did. Not until one day you come home and you got nothing. He's in Tahiti. Oh, somewhere. he skimmed everything, skipped town with your wife, and he's yep. making some nasty little half-breed babies in Tijuana? Yep. Yeah, He's on a yacht off the coast. And that's why you don't buy a fucking pug. Because they'll run off with your wife. I feel like this is the absolute other end to uh, Pet Cemetery. Yeah, this is what crazy people sound like. <laughs> <laughs> like, Pet Cemetery was about the pets coming back to life and, you know, just zombie pets. And this is like pets becoming productive members yeah, of society. This is pets getting shit on like everybody else. What do you mean just get to home and eat and shit and sleep? <laughs> no. You go out there and you get a fucking job. <laughs> you know, your ancestors used to hunt shit for us. What do you do? You poop in a box, you stupid cat. You'd have a, a sitcom called like S Sign Fox, something Sign like that. It's like literally just like Seinfeld and in the anthropomorphic world. They have all the opposable thumbs. Yeah, I'm thinking. So now, do we break up races as different animals, Whoa. or <laughs> does like each individual person's personality correspond to a different? I feel like we just go into racist well, stereotypes. Well, Honestly, like, the fucking one. I mean, break up classes. Break up classes and other oh, animals like that. Uh, the pigs are in charge. Remember, uh, right. Remember that book? Goddamn pigs. Remember that Fucking book? The get farm money, or money, pigs. Animal farm. Yeah. Animal farm, yeah. Yeah, the pigs are in charge. The horse does all the work. And uh, those are the two characters I remember. <laughs> uh, there's an Aesop lyric that just sticks with me. It's like, Although I sheep. might know, not know the inner workings of your tribe, I do know that's one ugly fucking tie. <laughs> Goddamn pigs. Oh, Why dude. knows pigs? Make money, money, money pigs. pigs. Let's make a deal. Dude, the I. The pigs. The pigs, pigs is a really the good dregs song. of what you're aim for. Dude, I love that song. That is my song. favorite Aesop song. I actually listened to the entire audiobook of Animal Farm at work one well, over like two days. Hmm. Uh, I got really into that. I like I like binged through classics at work, and some of them were surprisingly not so bad. Like Great Expectations. It's basically just like an 18th century or a 19th century like romantic comedy. It was weird. I feel I feel like I should uh, get more audio audio books. 
Audiobooks are the only way I can get through like factory work. In that situation, I don't think that the uh, the animals would necessarily represent the classes. They would represent the uh, the jobs and the personality archetypes yeah. that people actually are like spread amongst races. And I feel like uh, uh, Zootopia got that really well where they had the fucking sloths working at the DMV. DMV. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, dude, Zootopia did a really good job of anthropomorphizing a city that is better than our real world. <laughs> I liked the 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 cops though, cuz the cops were just like 80% muscle-bound like bears and fucking just titans who just like lots of aggression not so much on the intelligence scale Yeah, then you have a wee little bony rabbit and then there's the one lady cop who joins the force and it's just like well get ready for a lot of inappropriate locker room humor <laughs> <laughs> okay I have a, another read called spirit vision mm, spirit vision I'm intrigued already so you in the style of the old world, you go and you fast in the wilderness and starve yourself until you are just delirious. I did that last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like a modern spirit vision. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No, that was just, that was just cocaine you on just, a fucking... That was just, just a cocaine hangry. bender. <laughs> naked in the middle of fucking Wendy's. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, you can keep that. So, like, I'm, the buzz is more for comedic effect now than it is for actual, like, markers. <laughs> Uh, so you, you're fasting out in the wilderness, which is like the fucking park on the corner of, you know... Like yeah, you're at fucking Altbauer Park in Germantown. <laughs> just like dying on a picnic bench. Daddy, why is this skinny man naked underneath <laughs> the water fountain? He's searching for God. <laughs> so you fast in the wilderness of the suburbs for 40 I days and I love that you keep calling it wilderness. <laughs> until an apparition of Terry Crews appears before you and motivates the ever-living fuck out of you. He would just be like, uh, I saw this thing today where he was on The Daily Show and he was just like, you you can't love somebody and control them at the same time. And I was just like, oh, Terry Crews, you are my spirit animal. I, completely unrelated, but not because Terry Crews was mentioned. I want a portrait of him drawn in like Black Jesus uh, to hang like above my dining room table <laughs> because I think that asking yourself what would Terry Crews do and what would Jesus do are a lot like asking yourself the same question so uh, like, that man is fucking wholesome <laughs> <laughs> my uh yeah he's like a family man dude a hundred percent like he's and he's he's somebody that's like he just never gets caught slipping Right. Like, he is just always out there just like, I'm going to try and be a good... He's like he's like Dwayne Johnson. Do you ever hear about Dwayne Johnson doing some rude shit? No. Like, no. He's just a good guy. And it's, it's hard when you can't let role models, like celebrities, be role models. Because they're just people. And most of them are narcissistic and got to that position because, you know... They, yeah, and you're even talking about The Rock as just being a good person. Look where he came from, though. It's like... Oh, I'm the Rock. I'm on the WWF. Yeah, but the like, WWE is it, like. It, wait, a, wait, uh, wait. What you saying? Wrestling's not real, Sean. Wrestling's not real, and most of those guys are sweethearts. <laughs> <laughs> like the Johns Oh yeah, like like Batista. Yeah, he is a fucking just this sweet. Like Goldberg, I just watched him on the an episode of the Grand Tour. Yeah, he's dude. just such a nice guy. Dude, John Cena is an absolute gem. That guy's completed more Make a Wish Foundation things than like any next three people combined. Because <laughs> all he does is go out and just cheer up dying kids. Like Jesus Christ. Uh, are you familiar with the the blood the anime butterfly meme? Oh yeah, of course. Everybody, so, everybody, on the internet's. So it's with been. That. It, I saw one today. It was Hulk Hogan's face, <laughs> the butterfly. It said literally anyone, and he's like, "Is this a brother?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, that Stealing is. Stealing the internet's jokes. <sighs> oh, damn! Who the fuck, monk? Um, we got any more reads, or do we want to? Take a quick five. Oh, I actually I... have one more. All right, our grand finale. Let's this do one's it, called Gateway Referendum. This is kind of off of last week's, where I mentioned the uh, marijuana yep. in Mar Wisconsin referendum. Wef referendum for weeds. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is a referendum for recreational. Is it? Marijuana. I thought it was just medical. Nope. 
you had mentioned that medical marijuana being the, the gateway, gateway referendum, referendum to yeah. recreational. I was, I was pretty marijuana. proud of that. <laughs> so um, I was like trying to think of like other referendums to just be like gateway uh, yeah. referendums that just like going as far as I could. So um, higher speed limits leads to no speed limits, which leads to auto bonds. Which leads to literally Nazi America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I already knew where you were going. Uh, you got one. Yeah, first we let women vote, then Donald Trump happened. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh. All I'm saying is we never had a reality star president before 1929. <laughs> the year women earned suffrage. So thanks, ladies. <laughs> I mean, something like that, right? It's just a joke, people. <laughs> it's just a joke. It's just a joke. joke, it's just a joke. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Right. These are jokes, <laughs> folks. These, these are the jokes. This is what we got. All right. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, I'll take a break. So come out to the coast. We'll have a few laughs. We'll do a podcast. It'll be fun. You've been listening to Radio Loud. If you want to find us on multiple media platforms like YouTube, just type in Radio Loud, you big dummy. Or you can find us on Google Play, Stitcher, or Podbean at radioloud.podbean.com. Questions, criticisms, if you would like to get on the show, add us at Loudest Podcast on Twitter. Three, two... Baby Boogie Bumper Bumpers. Baby Boogie Bumper Bumpers. Baby Boogie... Oh, hi, America. Didn't see you there. Welcome back to Radio Loud. (laughs) At least the the smoke's finally escaped the room. Right. We were... Ooh, caught one. (laughs) A fruity fly. A fruity fly. And now a fucked fly. You know, uh, the fruit flies, they come from the... uh, Ocean? Fruit fruit roll-ups. Oh, I, that, just rid of the oh that's my ball. My, that's my ball. My bad. I ate a fruit roll-up on the way over here. Dude, what? I saw you on Snapchat fucking eating fruit roll-ups. I got a 64-pack. What the fuck is wrong with they you? They have what a 64-pack? Uh, I woke up on you Thursday. You got any more on you? No, I... I actually, yeah. Yeah, we do. Am I, I the only one in this one? building who doesn't like sweets and candy? Can I get one? Emily, you got the... Yeah, Emily's got the other one. We, we, we should mine on the way. Yeah, throw it in here. Yeah, pop in through the kitchen. Actually, uh, throw it over the throw yeah. it over the fence so it hits Sean in the face. Arc it. Ah, facial. Um, no, she uh, she comes over Thursday, and I wake up to literally a bouquet of flowers and a box of sixty four fruit roll ups. Aww. And I don't know, like to know. more? I didn't know what I did to deserve this, but I'm trying to do it again. Nothing. <laughs> because that was a great way to wake up. Sean, like, hi, it's ten thirty. Let me let me stay. Oh, oh my there god. There she is. What? The plethora of them. Gang, 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 gang. Fruit roll ups. Is Thank this? You. Thank you, baby. Is this happiness? <laughs> Sometimes I like to just huff the wrapper. Actually, my favorite format of that meme is like, is this spicy? <sighs> like white people. <laughs> white people and the corn. Red bell peppers. <laughs> is this spicy? It always gets me when you meet the stereotypical white people family who just like, we've not heard of salt and pepper. <laughs> they're out there and they're giving us all a bad name i i always thought like, it was this weird joke that like didn't land with me because my dad is like a pretty good cook he does like a lots of cooking you know all about the seasoning and everything and then i like got out in the real world and i've like met people and it's like oh you don't understand how make food good taste <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you God. don't understand how like the literal conquest of the world was literally how to get spices to make your yeah. make your food taste a little bit better how to make cabbage not taste like absolute shit <laughs> <laughs> how to how to ferment your water into alcohol so you can kill the bacteria and everybody doesn't die right like when you think about korea was so desperate to make their cabbage not shitty they started they buried- literally turned their cabbage into crack cocaine for <laughs> them, ladies and <laughs> they, they buried it and let it started to rot and we're like will it taste better like this <laughs> <laughs> like that's what sushi is half rotted fish and rice that's been buried for like a couple months and started to brine like 
Ugh. I feel like nowadays sushi is probably a little disconnected from that. Yeah, sushi like, is not so much. It's flash frozen. F- I mean, you can't really call it fresh if it's flash frozen, but that is essentially used to hopefully keep. Okay, I just gotta say, what is this? Can is this like a, a condom mm. mold? Do I poke my dick through this? Yeah, that's you a could. that's a Ronald McDonald's Magnum. Wait, wait, is this? That's a diaphragm. <laughs> is this the gay agenda? <laughs> Is this the gay agenda? Why does my fruit roll-up look like the homosexual flag? I haven't had one of these since I was six. They taste the same. Fucking delicious. They're going to be stuck in my molars. Yep. I'm just going to be having... Yep, just going to be... flashbacks. I, I once heard a wise man say... PTSD by the foot. Um, If we look at Sean, Uh-oh. right in this frame, he has a beard. Nice, lovely beard. Um... One of the advantages to having a beard and eating maple syrup pancakes. <laughs> so it was a disadvantage. Disadvantage, Just eating syrup maple syrup, yeah, it gets in your beard. Mm-hmm. Advantage, maple syrup gets in your beard. You could <laughs> just go, mmm. Just take a little days. lick off of it. I have, I have told people I do that. I definitely don't because I'm not a fucking savage. But we'll be in public and... You know, the lady will try and do the, let me groom you. You have shit in your beard. And it's like, no, bitch, I'm saving those meat scraps for later. <laughs> I can't finish the just whole thing. Just when you go to the, the ketchup, the, the plunger you push for the ketchup to squirt in the little tiny cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just put your beard under it and make a dollop right next to your mouth. Dude, Dude we wouldn't be able to. fry right in there. <laughs> He's the new Ed Sheeran. When we put the ketchup in his beard, it's so red. He can't, we can't uh. tell. <laughs> Please don't ever. I've had, I've had massive amounts of ketchup on me before. I don't like it. Don't ever do it to me. I will get wait, very wait. mad. You had a uh, a ketchup bukkake tsunami situation. Yes. Situation you had a, happened. Yes. Yes. You had a rake, okay. rake yawn moment with like ketchup. No, more. no, I don't want to talk about it. It was traumatic. People put a lot of ketchup on me. Was it like a, a rake yawn moment? It yeah, was, I would rather <laughs> fuck mustard. Ugh. So, we talked about the Nickelodeon slime before, mm. but with ketchup. <laughs> oh, no. Who cats up you? Who did this to you? Some summer camp people, because I was the child who made a lot of other people's lives hell. Oh, so it was well-reserved. Oh, I... Mm. Sir, most, I protest. I most of the bad married. things that happened of my life have been pretty deserved, if we're going to be real about it. <laughs> Um, I've asked for quite a lot of bad things to it happen. Sounds to sour. But yeah, the, the the thing they don't tell you about is like, but you sweet. know, you have that bite and it's not even like the stickiness that gets into your pores. It's not the like fact that you now think of that moment whenever you eat it's French fries. Smell. It's the smell. It is that fucking that just ketchup like ketchup smell. You're just buried in. There's no other food. There's no other like compliment to this smell of cat salt. You know what? That's why uh, they say when uh, you, your dog gets squirted by a skunk, smell. put him in tomato water because of the the smell. smell is overpowering. Yeah, it Ugh. seeps into everything. Jesus. So yeah, I mean, I still eat it, but I don't, I don't love it like I did as a child. Mm. All right, so... Uh, also, I no longer have a fucking gutter palate like a child, so... There's there's literally no segue from ketchup stories, getting gacked by ketchup to music. Yeah, there is. Okay. I don't know it. Ketchup. I mean, <laughs> ketchup. I, I, there's got to be. Ketchup, mustard, rake Okay, on. it's time for, uh, time for our Song music pick. So who wants to go Rabbit first? Self. Um, I can start us off. Ooh, mustard. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I need to get a, that sound button. I also here. need a list of things I've already um, done so I know not to hit the same people again. Okay. Dude, are you for real? You can't think back? This is our 10th episode. You can't think 10 weeks back? I can think 10 weeks back, but it doesn't mean I can remember 10 weeks back. Uh, have I talked about Proth before? You tell me. If this is, you can remember telling me. I don't know. Back. I usually stop paying attention when you start talking. What's the spirit? Um, actually, I'm not going to do that. I feel like I've hit nine different people off of Rhyme Sayers already. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to miss that whole thing. And I'm going to talk about Watsky this week. <laughs> oh, my God. The fucking Jewish YouTube rapper. Yep. 
My boy. <laughs> seen him live a couple times. He's actually, he actually puts on a pretty good show. Yeah, didn't he get started out of like uh, college campuses? Slam poet. Like yeah, well, when he did, when he started the rapping thing, he was. Uh, well, let's we'll, we'll start all the way from the beginning. Album, album I recommend is "All You Can Do" by Watsky. Uh, it's a 2014 album. Um, available pretty much everywhere: Spotify, YouTube, all that good shit. Uh, everywhere that fucks artists out of the well-deserved money that they get, the menial cash that they can get. Yep, place, you can get it. Places like us. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck yourself. Um, no, but he uh, he actually originally started as a slam poet. He was uh, the winner and finalist in multiple years of the like New York teen poetry competitions, where he did like a lot of actually really good poetry which surprise surprise translated well into hip-hop uh but one of my favorites uh poems of him is actually v is for virgin and it is <laughs> it's got i can imagine him like sticking out from slam poetry a bunch yeah. because it literally is a bunch of virgins who take on this whole like my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. yeah and he brought he, and, and he always brings like some humor to it which is probably well appreciated at some of those drier events of just like wow we just listened to seven overprivileged white kids cry about the same fucking thing but moving uh, dude, on i'm saying even the black people doing slam poetry some of them really have some profound shit to say some of them are literally just following the same like 100%. It's, it is like yeah, the, black people can do poetry too, Doug. It's like the emo music of rap sometimes. <laughs> yes, that's oh, a yeah. real good comparison. Yeah. Uh, but this is, like, he's he's done multiple albums before this, so he's definitely already found his groove quite a, quite a bit. But uh, he started out doing the college tours. I saw him at some bumfuck college in Platteville. I believe I went to go see him live. <laughs> he pulled me, actually, we were so drunk and rowdy and bordering on heckling. But he basically looked at our table, made a deal with us. He goes, if you guys shut the fuck up for the rest of the show, you guys can come up on stage with me at the end and we'll fucking do a song or something. And I was just like, bet. So, Oh, bet? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Corey. Me, me and him always used to throw the old bet back oh, and forth. Oh, bet? Uh, yeah, so we got super uh, super into the show. It was actually a really good time. He did actually call me up on stage, and we freestyled together, which was pretty silly. So always always give him a little bit of a, you know, he keeps a little spot in my heart for that because that was a little fun moment for me. Oh, were you actually able to, like, hold up, though? Oh, yeah, I crushed it. Like, you could tell that I got up there and, like, one, like, I was kind of starting to sober up a little bit where I could, like, string words together. Better. Oh, yeah, you were like, oh, man, give me some coffee, waiter. That's, that's not a big chance. That's yeah. a big chance no, to no, shine. I wasn't even doing that. I was still drinking through the show. But it was I'm definitely gonna, one of those I'm gonna things make where... It. I'm, this, is, this is my break. There's a record producer out here at the Platteville Student Union. Uh, it's like, yeah, right. <laughs> fucking Watsky barely fucking fought through tooth and nail to just get some like yeah. shit on promoter to get this bullshit show in Platteville, Wisconsin, which was probably in a state fairgrounds, and it probably smelled like donkey shit. I've actually, been a couple. <laughs> I've been in a couple of shows like that. Yeah, no, it was it was actually just straight up like in their student union, like at their like on campus. I played in some like shows where it's like, oh, we're gonna play at the state fairgrounds. And they had already started changing the sign to put the cafeteria menu. Oh up right, the yeah, like day. they actually had to bump him because they thought that uh, a B list celebrity tats. might drive through town and stop by the Dairy Queen. Um, so everybody in the town took off. Uh, but moving on to the album, this guy is known for very complex wordplay. You're gonna probably have to re-listen to some of these songs like multiple times to hear all the little jabs and random things he puts into it uh the one of my favorites on these because we're gonna skip right past the like uh watsky in paris as i believe what he calls it he acts like a fool on that um but sloppy seconds probably takes the cake on this um because he's, uh, he's probably a little bigger now. I wouldn't be surprised if most of the hip-hop heads have already heard of him. But uh, give this album a shot if you haven't already uh, already that, binged uh, out the boy. Sloppy Seconds by Watsky? Sloppy Seconds by Watsky off of the album All You Can Do. <coughs> also, my first stalker is fucking hilarious, too, when he raps about the first time he got famous enough to have a stalker. And I was like, that was kind of flattering. But she was pretty fucking crazy. I, uh... 
back in my show playing days as a literal teenager, played a show in West Bend at some just Woo! bullshit Legion Hall. There was a guy named Larry, and he had this band named Rictus Grin. And Larry literally had what's called a head cape. Where okay. the, it's just all bald on top and just all long. Cause he oh, to be the skull it. Yeah. Skullet, but I like head cape. <laughs> I like I like the skullet. Uh, so cape. <laughs> he introduced this one song as um, I used to see this one girl, but then she got better blinds. This song, <laughs> this song's called <laughs> Stalker, and it's just like a watch as a young man watching this like old guy make that joke. I was just like, I hope I am never in his position doing this to a bunch of like. People, kids, kids yeah. like me in an audience. And oh. now that probably just sounds like the funniest fucking thing in the world. If you were playing <laughs> to a group of kids, you just say the most fucked up shit to them. <laughs> just like, because I'm curious what'll stick to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what stuck. <laughs> and then I actually found out um, my uh, buddy down the street, Jeremy, his dad uh, worked at like a boat motor manufacturing plant. Okay. And he worked with Larry from Rictus. <laughs> <laughs> That's he came. He came one day and he was like, "Oh, guess what?" I was like, "What?" My dad works with Larry from Rictus Grin, and it's like we didn't think he was like cool or anything. We literally thought he was like the ass of the joke. Yeah, yeah. Even at the fucking like thirteen year old, <laughs> I was like, "I can't believe your dad works with Larry from Rictus Grin, dude." Bob and Brian. Reference Larry from Rick Grin. No shit on their fucking show. He is that well known in the fucking I mean, area you, as a personality. Yeah, I mean, if you pound the pavement long enough, you get out there. You're a bit of a of a character. You get to be the the Milverine. Yep, the Milverine. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fucking uh, I'm gonna be the, the the Viking on the skateboard. Yeah, <laughs> like we were discussing. Yeah, that dude. Earlier. With the when, when, once you get the little motor, but. The, I'm going to fucking hide my face. Well, you have to. Yeah. You so, have to be an urban legend, yeah. not a local douchebag. Right. <laughs> so nobody can associate with my actual name. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, what's up with that guy? Oh, that's just fucking Doug. This is all he does. He doesn't have any friends. That's way less cool than, did you see that crazy? Yeah, I've seen the crazy, the, the crazy motorbike Viking riding around the city. Yeah, the crazy skateboarder Viking. Uh, they just call me Val. Short for Valhalla. Short for Valerie, <laughs> because he's a woman, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, underneath it, I'd just be like, oh, this big fucking fake fur coat, and just be like, Foof. and he's got breasts, big big tits. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Shout out to Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. I wish there were Mary Tyler Moore of you out there. Oh, <laughs> got him. You know what I'm talking about, though. She, like, came out on stage in the Variety Hour. She just, like, had a set of fake tits, like, plastic tits on. Oh. And she just, like, walked out on camera and just, like... <laughs> and they didn't blur it. They, like, put it on live TV because it was like, oh, these are actually fake tits. Yeah, it's because they're not real tits, so it's not actually nudity. Yeah, and then came a day and age where that didn't matter. Yeah. Damn shame. All right. Uh, so... So mm -hmm. your album... <laughs> My album this week is called I Care Because You Do by Richard D. James, better known as Aphex Twin. This, that is an interesting pull for you. Right. Well, dude, I'm actually like Aphex Twin is one of my huge influences. I have just fucking loved this guy since I saw Grandma's Boy. Basically, I need a clip of you just saying I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be a. I was actually um, skirt 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 skirt. Tom Segura was on uh, uh, Jim and Andy today. Okay. Uh, I don't know who Jim or Andy is, but he was basically talking about how he used to be a person who would sit through reality TV show raw recordings Ugh. and literally document all the shit. That they could say so they could reformat stuff into stuff that they would 
make them say I'm make you say some fucked up shit when you just never you never said nothing about Eskimo yeah, kids he was like but, part of the fucking machine that would make it so you could turn that's, that's this disgusting. stuff into some sort of like narrative genre but he wasn't the mastermind behind it isn't it easier just he to was, write a script that's what they would do <laughs> they would write a script and then they would go through the footage and fucking find it but couldn't you just have them say the stuff you wanted them to say? <laughs> right. I don't understand. This seems like so much more work just to make people say shit. If, if everybody's out, you can find, LA's full of them, shitty actors. They're out there. I know, but maybe they're so shitty that you don't, <laughs> even, you don't even want them to like pretend to be better. Like, like, okay, I've said this time and time before. LA has become a magnet for just hacks who want to go out there and make it who have no business being I love how the there. nobody from Milwaukee just has LA pegged dude I'm gonna let you have it I'm just saying cause I don't know shit about LA all I'm saying is LA like uh, it kind of hit me when um, uh, America's Got Talent when it was in its beginning years when they had like Hasselhoff on mm -hmm. the judge panel it was like in its second season I think I was okay. watching that shit on Hulu and they went to LA and uh, Hasselhoff was just like, yeah, this is my town. We're going to find a bunch of talent here. Hacks. Hacks. <laughs> hacks. I was like, yeah, that's the place that people who want to get famous move to to get famous when... They don't have any Yeah, they don't get. Skills. They don't got a plan. They don't got any skills. So that's why That's why I'm, I'm, stating, I'm sticking my ground here in Milwaukee. Yeah, you're... Basing, you're basing your worldview off Hasselhoff's offhanded comments <laughs> on America's Got Talent. Yeah, so. I'm not. I'm not, though. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Richard D. James, Apex Twin. Okay. He, okay. Uh, Wait, is he DJ Ames or is he D. James? Uh, Richard D. James. I think it's David James. Richard D. J. Ames. DJ Richard Ames. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Are you trying to do a who's on first? I'm honestly just making noises at this point. Richard D. James. Okay. Uh, he was from Cornwall, and he basically started making music through things that didn't make music. He took a early computer, like an early version of a Commodore 64 mm -hmm. that you would plug into your TV and mm -hmm. use that as a monitor. Yeah. Like, the thing literally did not output speakers or noise or anything like that but he found a way to put like code into it and make his own code to make it make like weird tv interference <laughs> so he could make sounds based on like the interference he was putting into the tv and uh that's basically how he started making music he made music with midi yeah, before just, midi just mad scientist his way into music and this was when he was like Eight. Prodigy. I wouldn't say prodigy. It was just fucking bored. He broke a he broke a Commodore sixty four when he was eight. What did you do? His child life was literally described as like it was very good, and but we were just like so remote, and we were just like left to our own devices for entertainment. And that's one of the things. What did he just, grow up? He just uh, Cornwall. Oh, that's right. Yes, you just said Cornwall. So uh, yeah, his parents were Welsh. And poor bastard. This w one of the things that stuck out for me in his uh, they're the stereotypical sheep fuckers, right? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, with his body of music, you'd think he's like a really weird, but he's actually kind of a. I'm surprisingly well adjusted. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, one of the things that made him want to make his own music was that this was pre-internet, where you could just go grab anything. Like he was geographically, yeah. he was geographically isolated. Okay, so he had to make all his own samples, yeah. all his own pulls. He everything. had to make his own shit to do with it, and that's why his shit just turned out fucking strange, dude. Isolate somebody in a tank for 20 years, and they come out speaking a different language. Or just isolate someone in a fucking town not too much different from where I grew up in, like, the up north of America, like... Dude, Hiles, the, Wisconsin, that's where I grew up. There's some fucking weird people up there, man. I know quite a few folks, uh, like former coworkers and friends, who like moved down here from the UP. They have different metrics of what everything is. It's very it's very interesting to just kind of like see some of the folks that have meandered out of their isolationist uh, worlds. 
I would definitely say that uh, the people are much nicer, but a little small town mentality. They yeah. are, yeah. They also kind of you you can tell they've never only been out seen of their town. One, sometime, yeah, only seen sometimes. one type of people, one type of way of living. They, they will literally give you the shirt off their back if you need it, though. Like it, yeah. I feel like the stigma placed on them for being isolated is kind of misunderstood. Well, I feel like the level of small-mindedness is very synonymous with like hateful ignorance nowadays. And just not, just because you haven't seen something or haven't been exposed to it doesn't necessarily mean that you're like a hateful bigot for just like not knowing this or that or the other thing. I mean, I don't think I think ignorance is stigmatized a little too much. Like we're all ignorant about some things, and people should just mm-hmm. kind of own up to it and admit it a little bit more, and it wouldn't be so fucking hard. Yeah, ten four. <clears throat> that was a tough one, good buddy. Oh, look who's uh, look who peeped up. <laughs> There's actually a uh, hot take uh, meme going on around na- uh, right now, where it's um, if you actually are on the side of like social justice, uh, yeah. actively chastising people just for ignorance. And yeah, you're essentially discouraging them from ever digging deeper. From having a conversation yeah. that you About, might have had five years ago to learn this. Yeah. yeah. If you don't take the time to have that uh, conversation with them, you are essentially the problem. And yeah. you are making this whole worse. They're, yeah. prolo- they're prolonging it and they're just continuing. The, they're just allowing right. it to Don't continue. be a douchebag. That's basically the end of the fucking how to treat Teach each other. Teach people. <laughs> right? Teach don't be, people. Don't be Inform a douchebag. People. Even other douchebags. Because douchebag begets douchebaggery. <laughs> so, uh, back to the album. Back to the album. Uh, Apex, Apex Twin. Twin. Not a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's literally his... The album name is I Care Because You Do. Aww. And uh, my pick off of this album... Uh, this was a album where he actually had the Aphex Twin name established. Mm. He kind of did like a bunch of like weird stuff, like I was talking about, where he was dubbing stuff. Experimental, yeah. he, uh, not experimental. It's like he was literally just doing all he knew how to do. Like uh, everybody comes from a primordial ooze where they're doing really shitty work, and some people get famous and then they look back at their work, like it was some sort of. God, it's like no, they were just like doing shit really bad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, and uh, it's the romanticization of it. Yeah, just because it made you famous doesn't mean it was necessarily technically good. There was like a critic who, uh, like, on one of his first major publications, that yeah. was just like, "It's good, but it's all done on tape, and the audio quality is noticeably shit." <laughs> It's good music, but it sounds bad. <laughs> so this album is mainly like it starts out with a uh, just ambience and stuff like that, and then it gets into like some weird stuff. This is like early '90s, so it's kind of. Um, I'm worried you're going to alienate some listeners who try and put this on, and they're just like, "What the fuck did he just recommend to me?" Nope. Uh, again, uh, Aphex Twin. I care because you do. The sleeper hit that I want to recommend off of this is a song called uh, Cow Cud is a Twin. It is not like anything I've ever heard him do. It's just an at play track, obviously. When I look at this, this is just, it's very jolly. You could literally have a like 90s hip hop rapper be at home. It's, it's just very bouncy, very playful. Yeah. Very fun, not very weird or melancholy. I feel like artists like Dead Mouse, okay. although they're not weird, they stemmed from the melancholy, like overall tone of Aphex Twin, because okay. a lot of his stuff is just depressing. Hmm. Although it doesn't say a, a word of lyrics a lot of the time, it's very downtrodden. Yeah, but then I mean, you, you have, have uh, sad music without sad words. You just have these crazy contrast pieces where it's like techno breakbeat fetishization like uh uh come to daddy mm-hmm. um pop hits and then the satirization of pop hits which is in window liquor yeah and then you have just yeah. straight up piano pieces and then you'll have tracks that are just straight up his parents calling him on the answering machine and it's just them Oh, he was doing that him? still. Everybody's people still releasing albums with like, "Here's my answering machine, dog." Yeah, but this was like literally his parents that like uh, they called him up. Just like, "Oh, here's the day that you were born." 
<laughs> and we rush to the hospital and his parents literally sing him happy birthday and he put that on their album that's i bet you his parents love that shit right and that all that stems back to what i started this with you would think he was a twisted weird individual it's like no he would he's just a guy yeah he's just a guy just a guy who loves his parents <laughs> he had a very happy childhood and he just grew up in the country and didn't have much to do that's it dope yeah. thanks for sharing Doug. <laughs> i'm gonna have to check out twin I, that's a name i haven't heard in years oh i could give you some great great starting points for him text me <laughs> got something jake Fuck Not tonight. Him. All right. All right. I feel like we definitely uh, overextended. Our draws. Yeah. I'm a bit spent. overextended. Fucking waiting for your ass to go up. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. I hear you on that. All right. And without further ado, we've been us. You've been you. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs>